On this episode of Repair Geek, how to adjust the valve clearance on your 8th generation Honda Civic with a 1.8 or R18, if you speak Honda, engine. Alright guys, before we get started, I do have a, one thing I want to say. If you've never adjusted valves before, there is a certain amount of feel that you need to be able to do this correctly. And I try to do as best as I can in the video as far as conveying how that's supposed to feel, but unless you've done it yourself, it's kind of hard to explain. So my suggestion is if you've never done this before, just you need to realize that you may get this back together and it may sound worse than when you started because you got one of these valves misadjusted. Also, if you get the valve clearance too tight, the valves can hang open the reason that's important, if a valve hangs open, that means it isn't being cooled anymore because the valve seat is actually what's drawing the heat out of the valve. So if the valve hangs open, it's going to burn. And when you burn a valve, it basically, you lose compression in that cylinder. You lose compression in a cylinder, then you're tearing the cylinder head off and doing major, major work. So just a word of caution before you get started. But the procedure itself is really not that hard. Honda is pretty good about knowing that these engines are going to need service, so everything's pretty well thought out in the engine bay. Alright, first thing I'm going to do, there's a 10 millimeter bolt on the battery. You want to go ahead and remove the negative battery cable because we do have to take the positive lead off of the alternator. So we'll stash that down there. After you guys get the battery disconnected, you're going to want to go ahead and pull the passenger side front wheel. What we need to do is you have to be able to get to the crank bolt to be able to turn the motor over so you can adjust each cylinder. So there's a 19 millimeter bolt inside this hole that you got to hook up to and you'll be able to turn the motor over as you go. If you want it easier to turn over, you can take out the spark plugs as well, but it's really not that big of a deal. All right, so on the top of the engine, there's a couple things we got to remove. First of all, this cover for the wiring harness, two flathead screws. It should pop up out of the way. Alright, so we're going to unplug all the coils. Remove all the coils. Each one of these is secured with a 10 millimeter bolt. Pull all the, co pull all the coils out. Just to basically give you more room. We're going to remove this 10 millimeter bolt from the top of the alternator. Pull this cover back on the wiring harness and unplug the harness from the alternator. It's got a clip here, you just push in on that clip and pull it out. It's kind of a pain, but it'll come out. This goes to the AC clutch. We're going to unplug this as well. And finally, we got a clip here that we're going to undo. Just push the tab to the left, it pops right off. Next, we're going to remove these 10 millimeter bolts holding the harness to the valve cover. Once you get that loose, 
over here on the far end, if you slide it to the right, you can lay that off to the side like that. Over here, I'm gonna take this PCV hose off, top of the valve cover. Okay, so underneath, you have a cover back here that goes over top of the fuel injectors. It's really hard to get you guys in here because it's over top of the cowl. So this is gonna pull straight off. There's a wiring harness over here on the right side that needs to get unclipped out of that cover. Here's a better shot of the bottom of that cover. It has these rubber grommets in here. Uh, two of them stayed on the car and one came with the cover, but try to keep track of them when you pull that off. It just pulls straight off once you get the harness unclipped from this clip. So you got two bolts, one here, one here, that hold the wiring harness to the valve cover on the back side. So you gotta take those out as well. Just like the rest of these, these are all 10 millimeter. So this harness is loose. It's still connected to the four fuel injectors in the back, but I'm just gonna push it back like this and get it out of my way when I set these valves. I'm sure you can unplug the fuel injectors and undo this clip and stuff to buy yourself some more room if you want it, but it shouldn't be that big of a deal. All right, so I've got four bolts here in the front of the valve cover, and there's another four on the back side, and they're all 10 millimeter as well. All right, so once you get all the all eight bolts out of the valve cover, you want to pull the dipstick out. And then just pull up on this corner and the whole thing should come up. Careful with the gasket. I'm gonna, I bought a new gasket for this thing, so if it gets torn, it's not a big deal, but. Figure the car's got 100,000 miles on it. It's gonna be close to 11 years old. I'm already in here. I'm just gonna put a valve cover gasket on it while I'm here. Alright, so once you get the valve cover off, this is what you're going to have. And the way this works, you come down here to your, chiming, to your timing chain sprocket. As you can see, this says up. Well, up is cylinder number one. So you're going to set the valves on cylinder number one when that says up is at the top. Now, as you can see, these are the two exhaust valves for cylinder number one. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to come in with a feeler gauge underneath and check each one of these before I adjust anything. If they don't need adjusted, I'm not going to do it. If they do, I'm going to adjust them. So the specs on these are seven to nine thousandths clearance on the intake and nine to eleven thousandths on the exhaust. If you're in the land of maple syrup, that's 0.18 millimeter to 0.22 millimeter on the intake and 0.23 to 0.27 millimeter on the exhaust. So now here on number one, I'm gonna take my feeler gauge and slip it in between the exhaust and see if I have a little bit of drag. So that one's a little loose. That one's not terrible. But you're looking for basically a little bit of drag. So when I say a little bit of drag, when I say a little bit of drag, basically take your fingers and kind of pinch this and then pull it. 
and that's probably too much. You see how that's bending the feeler gauge? You want it something like that. A lot of this, guys, has to do with feel. There's no way that I can try and convey what this is supposed to feel like, but the best way I can describe it is you want a very minute amount of drag. So I'm gonna adjust this one. What I'm gonna do, get my feeler gauge in there. Just let that guy sit there like that. I'm gonna take a 10 millimeter. Break your lock nut loose. You can get a flat blade screwdriver. And you're gonna run it in just a little bit. Now you're going to want to leave your screwdriver on the adjustment screw basically because when you tighten when you tighten this lock nut down it may move the center and change that valve adjustment. So you're just going to snug that up and double check it. And you're good. All right, so you can also kind of set these by sound. Hopefully you can pick this up. You can hear it, it's snug. But it's not super, super tight. So you're gonna repeat that procedure that I just showed you for all the intake valves, all the exhaust valves on cylinder number one. Then you're gonna roll the engine over to the next position. It'll be marked number two on the sprocket. And then you're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on cylinder number two. Once you get that one done, you're gonna go through, do the same thing. Keep rolling your sprocket over till you see number three. Once you get number three done, you're gonna do the same thing to number four. So you're just gonna go right down the line. Now it's probably not gonna go in order one, two, three, four. You may jump around, you may do one, then four, then three, then two, or you know something like that. But the procedure is the exact same. So I'm not gonna show you guys me adjusting all these valves because they're all, they're all identical. The only thing you need to know is the specification. It is different for the exhaust than it is the intake due to the amount of heat that goes through the exhaust compared to the intake side. So I'm gonna bring you guys back when I'm ready to put, start putting things back together. All right, so once you get all the valves set, what you're gonna to wanna to do is get a couple dabs of RTV and put right where the timing cover meets the cylinder head there. Uh, that's what they do at the factory, so scrape off the factory RTV, put fresh stuff on so it doesn't leak. Um, the other thing I did was I went through and torqued all of the jam nuts on every one, whether I adjusted it or not to spec. And the last thing I'm doing is I got a fresh valve cover gasket for the valve cover because, well, let's face it, we're there. All right. Fresh gasket, I'll put a link in the description for it, just like the rest of the stuff I use. You kinda wanna, when you set this valve cover down, you wanna set it directly down. You don't wanna try and push it around and smear it because you're gonna end up smearing that RTV all over the place. Get the bolts back in. So once you get the valve cover on, run your bolts in all the way, obviously. When you go to torque it, work from the center out. So the, here, 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 here. You get the idea. So after I get that done, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get this wiring harness in here in the back, tied back down.
Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the cover back on the back. Remember to pay attention to your three grommets and clip your wiring harness back in. There's that. Connect up our PCV hose. Clamp back on it. All right, so now we're going to swing the wiring harness back over, put the clip back in on the right hand side. Come back over to the alternator. Pop the plug back in. Go hook up your AC clutch. Clip your wiring harness in. Throw your coils in. So once you get all your coils back in, go ahead and uh, put your cover back on for your wiring harness. A quarter turn. And you're done. Alright guys, that's it. I'd say if you've done this before or you've done something similar to this, it's a piece of cake. Figure an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours if you shoot a YouTube video on it or it's the first time doing it. So if you've ever adjusted valves in a, it doesn't matter if it's a dirt bike, motorcycle, ATV, diesel engine, whatever, you know exactly how that feeler gauge is supposed to feel in between the rocker arm and the tip of the valve. So I'll put links to the feeler gauges and some of the tools and stuff that I use the valve cover gasket. I'll put all that stuff down in the description. As always guys, if you like the video, hit like. And if you want to see more content, as always, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.